volume. Okay. Um, my name is Dave Watkins, uh, and I'm really pleased to uh, to be here today. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming. I know it's a beautiful fall day, and so that might be uh, distracting some folks. Uh, hopefully, more will be here for uh, later this morning. Um, uh, before we start, uh, I, I want to move quickly to our, our keynote speaker, uh, Professor James Boyce. Uh, I just want to give a little bit of background about the DAV Center and this DAV conference. Um, people are always asking, what does DAV stand for? And to be honest, I'm not completely sure. Uh, but several years ago, uh, a group of us wanted to form an umbrella organization for our, our international programs. We had several meetings with faculty staff and student input and couldn't really reach a consensus. And then uh, Professor Kurt Patterson was the founding director of the program. He announced one day that we're calling it the D80 Center. And uh, I think it means a lot of things to different people, and I think that's really good. We've used a lot of different D words over the years, and so you can think about your programs and, and the types of activities. Uh, that they involve scientific discovery, engineering design, product development and delivery, uh, the defense of rights of, of marginalized groups, low-income groups, um, the rights of future generations uh, to a sustainable environment, and then, uh, of course, the delight that, that we experience uh, in working with communities, um, overcoming challenges, helping them overcome challenges, and, and making new friends. So the 80 part, I can explain a little better. Um, when we looked at the types of projects that we, our groups tended to work on, the students worked on, uh, they tended to be with communities that were in the lower 80 percentile of, of income. So this, this graph shows, um, the distribution of global income for, as a percentile on the x-axis, income per household member on the y-axis. And about 80% of the world earns about $5,000 per person per year, uh, or less. And second, that's be about $15, $20 per day. And we really feel like that's, that's sort of the range uh, that a lot of our programs um, are working in. So, so hence, that's DAE. That's my best explanation for it. Um, but keep, keep, your, uh, keep, keep this in mind, this $5,000 level. I'm going to show some graphs in a minute. Uh, quickly go through some. Uh, we'll see what this $5,000 per year means to a lot of people. Um, but you know, we also, we don't want to forget about the U.S. And so here's an income distribution for the United States. And uh, you know, we have about 15% of our population is below the poverty line right now. Um, and so that comes out to be about uh, household income of maybe $20,000 or less. It's pretty hard to get by on that nowadays in the U.S. So maybe the you know, we could sort of flip it, I think, for the U.S., where it's maybe it's the t lower 20th percentile um, that, you know, we, we'd like to work with in our community-based uh, engineering and, and research programs. Uh, just quickly give me an overview of these are some of the, the programs that uh, we broadly classify as DED programs. Uh, these are all presenting here today. Uh, we have students in our Peace Corps Masters International program here. We have eight programs across campus now. We're the largest Peace Corps Masters campus in the country, so that's something Michigan Tech is very proud of. Uh, we have the Padless Leadership Institute. Uh, this is a select group of students who earn scholarships and travel abroad. Um, right now they're working in Malta, Ghana, and India, and two of those groups will be presenting today. Uh, we have our Engineers Without Borders chapter, uh, several of them are here today, and they're, and they're uh, selling uh, some goods out in the lobby as a fundraiser. Uh, they have projects in Guatemala and Bolivia. Uh, most, uh, this is a relatively new group. This is the Michigan Tech Open Sustainability Technology Lab. They focus on developing low-cost, open-source technology that can be adopted around the world. So they're really doing some exciting things. Uh, another relatively new program are environmental or energy and environmental policy program in social sciences, and uh, our this is our international senior design program. We call it I Design in civil and environmental engineering, but there's a number of international senior design programs across campus. 
and you know I don't I can't really come up with a count, but of all these programs, um, they've worked in at least 60 different countries. So I think that's pretty impressive and something we should be proud of here. I'll mention a couple of others. These are sort of short duration uh, grant funded projects. We've had a couple uh, EPA People, Prosperity, and the Planet. Uh, student design competition grants, and uh, there's going to be a presentation today by one of those students who worked on one of those projects. And we've had a couple international research experiences as well um, in Bolivia and Tanzania. Okay, so for the general theme of this conference, since it's the seventh annual DE conference, um, I thought, well, why don't we take a look at the United Nations Millennium Development Goal 7. Um, which, which a lot of our projects address directly and, and others indirectly. Uh, a lot of people, at least in, in my field, environmental engineering, are very familiar with this target. It's really the third target of this goal, which is to reduce by 50% or more the population, the proportion of the population without sustainable access to safe drinking water and basic sanitation. Um, so we'll take a look at how we're doing uh, with respect to that target. Uh, but there's others, uh, including integrating principles of sustainable development into country policies and programs, reducing biodiversity loss, and uh, improving the lives of uh, slum dwellers. And this is, this is a real problem around the world. A lot of urban migration and uh, low-income countries simply can't keep up with the, the infrastructure that's needed for these populations. Uh, so just a few graphs here. I don't want to take up too much time, but I, I really like this, uh, this this software, this website called Gapminder.org by Hans Rosling. Compiled a bunch of data, and I won't show you here, but you can show animations. You can push play, and you can see how each bubble here is a country, and the size the size of the dot is proportion of the population. Uh, and you can you can press play, and you can see how countries evolve through time. And so this shows improved water access as a percentage on the y-axis. And this is income per person. So here I've drawn that line, that $5,000 income per person line. And we can see, actually, we're making progress worldwide. We're on target to meet this goal. So this is the good news of the Millennium Development Goal targets. But regionally, you can see here the colors. Uh, these are sub-Saharan African countries that sort of dark blue or purple. Uh, Africa's lagging way behind. They're not going to make this target. Uh, and then we see a lot of uh, countries our students go to in, in Latin America. Um, and they're, they're improving. Uh, Haiti's an outlier here. Uh, some improvement, but they're still running at maybe 80 to 90 percent. And rural access is worse in general, too. So. Uh, sanitation, here's, excuse me, um, Here's a case where we're not, we're not going to meet the target by 2015. Um, so you can see really below this $5,000 per capita line, a lot of countries can't even provide 50% of their population with uh, safe sanitation. Uh, if you look at energy, uh, this shows energy from solid biomass on the y-axis. Um, again, below this line, we see a real, a real cutoff. Um, lots of low-income communities, households are still relying on, on wood for cooking, and that has a lot of health effects, um, and for heating, and as well as uh, environmental impacts due, due to deforestation, loss of biodiversity. Now, we're making progress in a lot of ways, but here's one um, one problem I think we have, this shows CO2 emissions per person <coughs> plotted versus income. And this is a log log scale. Um, I drew the line on here, although there's not really, I don't know, any kind of sharp change. Although it, it's, I think it's poignant to see that uh, the wealthy countries use about 100 times, or they emit about 100 times or more the CO2 per person than low-income countries. So as these low-income countries develop, uh, the question is, do they have to follow this track, or can they divert from it uh, and develop more sustainable energies? Uh, and there's some, there's some success stories out here of countries that are, are relying on more uh, 
energies that have lower impact than renewable energies. So that's just a quick uh, survey of some of these uh, some of these indicators that are relevant to this uh, Millennium Development Goal Seven. Um, some successes, uh, a lot of work to do in other in other areas. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I'm really happy to introduce uh, Professor